by those pure of heart. Thor, a god that even some of the humans don't even call out to anymore. I'm going to put the Jotun Grainer replica just on the table. What is this? I speak of Mjolnir and you show me a hammer? Uh... You don't know what this is? Should I? Mm. Alright, uh, Uker has a plan. He's Jotun getting these two... Grainer, is what uh, the mole says. This, uh... This one is fake. Jotun Gra Wait, I recognize that name. You must excuse right. my father, he is a bit hot under the collar. Yes, but the, the strength of Thor is through me! And you notice a bunch of dwarves kind of get up and leave at the mention of that. Apparently there's a... Um, dwarf worshipping a human god is might be the... Might be the thing. The, the straw and the camel in the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, they're not. They're not saying anything bad about him, or they're maybe whispering amongst themselves, but they're they're not. Uh... And then he's called him father a few times. You don't know whether this yep. means it's like father because he's a priest, or father, as in that's his knowledge, daddy. <laughs> nature for what a mole is. Sure. Twenty-three. The sterile offspring of a man and a dwarf. I have. A first drinks. Uh, we're gonna get them drunk. Um, they are typically strong and hardy, um, and they can see in the dark. And this guy seems to be pretty, pretty well built. Like he might, might have spent yeah. a lot of time at the forge. Uh, I have uh, something I want to show. Ugh. <laughs> All right. So more drinks come, and he doesn't. He yep. doesn't argue with that. Um. All right, so we're gonna have a couple of drinking competitions. I'm gonna pound. What are you mythic? I drink real fast. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> Grolstag will drink with you. Grolivar doesn't participate. He actually tries to convince Grolstag or remind him that, uh, uh, remind him of the last time and remind him that there's a king's coronation tomorrow, um, and that we don't want to piss off the prince. We don't right. want to look bad to the prince and the king. Nonsense. Uh, would they expect us to go to a dwarven hall and not drink? By Thor, I shall drink with Uka the Strong. And any no. dwarf or man who is man enough to drink with us can. And he and he takes a pouch and shoots it down the table. A bunch of little red gems go flying out of it like he's he's just bought the hall. Uh, oh, drinks. This is awesome. Uh, the plan... <laughs> Grolivar just kind of... <laughs> like, <laughs> he does not look enthused. <laughs> uh, Uker wants to take these two through the rune stone to go look at the actual Jotun Grainer. Oh, they they end up try. Give me a uh, diplomacy check. Um, they've just thrown <laughs> down cash to drink. Oh, oh yeah, no. Uh, I, I, this is a a drunk one o'clock in the morning kind okay. of visit to see, <laughs> <All right. laughs> see the real Jotun Grainer. This isn't no, like, sober so visit. So there's drinking, and the news spreads throughout Dvergholm that there's some rich dwarf who's buying drinks, and the place begins to slowly pack full of, uh, full of Osgardian warriors from visiting delegations, plus dwarves, plus others. Um, let's, let's, let's zip over to um, the conversation yeah, yeah. that is happening with the, um, with Galath and Lokrik. Lokrik is actually receiving visitors one by one, um, he's in a private dining area, um, which they've set up just sort of, uh, as a place where you can kind of stand and talk. Um, who's, uh, who is next? We'll say that, uh, Droda, uh, Godsbeard. Do we have a, is there a place on the map for this? Yeah, it's a private dining area. I can force you to the... Oh, if you could, yeah. There's a lot of undercity. Just over to the right here. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um... Galath, I'd like to introduce you to Droda. Droda's a childhood friend of mine. He is a priest of, um, uh, let's see. He's a priest of Malthamaduin, the, the watchful eye and the finder of trails. Galath offers a, a bow 
It is a pleasure to meet you. Aye, the pleasure is mine, Sir Galleth of Nalbren. I have been raised on the, on the tales of dwarvish heroes and heroes from other cultures. It is an honor to be in the presence of Lokrix's friends, these heroes of ages. Drode has been long a supporter of my claim to the throne. He is trusted. Anything you have to say can be said in, in front of him. I have told him much about the, um, the heroes of Aegis and our struggles. Very well. Since you are such a trusted friend, Rhoda, if there's anything that you need, you may call upon me and find me ready to answer. By the graces of the Morden Salmon, I thank you for what you and your friends did in defeating Laudrum. Unfortunately, I was away on pilgrimage to go and visit the lands to the south to learn more about our Voslandic masters. And learn I have. It's good to see you back, Droda. <clears throat> He kind of clasps Droda, and Droda, Droda, like, seems to not know what to do, and Lokrik's touching him, and he just simply bows quickly. Um, he doesn't wear any armor, he doesn't carry an axe, he doesn't seem hmm. to have any weapons on him today. Okay. Uh, Galath is just, he has his Nalbrini's sword at his side, um, and he's not wearing his armor, because it's being stored in his shield. Well, I must, I must apologize. I did not learn anything about Nalbrin, but hopefully you can tell me of the stories of, of you and your companions going on to Yggdrasil. Mm, when there's time. I see from the roster here that there are many visitors. Yes, we've got um, um, dele delegations from several kingdoms that have come for your coronation. I'm just going to close the door for a second. We've reached that stage in the cold where all the Kleenex in the house is gone. I'm forced to use the uh, paper. Kleenex, uh, other Kleenex-like things. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if toilet um, paper is hurting your nose, that means you bought the wrong toilet paper, and your butthole hates you. Right. 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 It does. It just does. Uh, okay. We have several delegations. Um, King Ogman says sends his regrets, but his um duties in the south um, keep him there he has sent his son Prince Ogmanson son of the High King of Vosgard he has a interesting delegation um, he has brought the follower of Thor and his mull son to the celebration hmm. what do you make of that it may be a mixed message that all in his kingdom are welcome, but he also likely sends the message that the supremacy of the Vosgardian culture supersedes that of dwarves. Hmm. My grandfather did bend knee to a human king long ago, and they allowed us to create Dvergholm here. We should honor that. Yes. Um. But not at the point of total submission. No, we've been given a measure of autonomy. What of, um, what of the news of, um, us becoming, of Rovland becoming a protector state at Dvergholm? Ah, yes. Um, there are some in the capital... Gallop looks a little embarrassed at that. There are some in the capital of Vozen, Vozen Saga that um, were up in arms of this. There are others that simply did not care or um, wish to use this as um, political leverage against Vergholm. 
Of course, they do not know what type of king that you will make, Lokrik, so many are here, many important people are here to, um, well, meet you and to learn of your character. Of course, following your coronation, um, I believe the prince is under orders to escort you at your leisure to um, pay fealty to the king himself in the capital. Hmm. Lokrik, Lokrik doesn't seem to be annoyed at the fact that he has to pay fealty. He seems annoyed that he won't be able to go adventuring. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have that kind of time. Okay, Drogon. We have... King gonna have to wait. We have... <clears throat> He looks at Jorda again and re reminds himself that it's okay to speak in front of him. Yep. We have the Norns to consider. And we have our friend, Barkon. The Norns are not only known amongst the Dwarves, but amongst the Vosgardians as well. Perhaps before you go and visit the Norns, you should go and visit the great priests of the Vosgardians. <clears throat> they may know more about these norns than the dwarves do and then even still there is the acropolis and the situation there there is yeah. much that requires our attention Jordan just simply looks to Lokrik and Lokrik kind of waves like he'll tell him later <clears throat> ah but let us speak of the delegations here and now Prince Ogman's son is a very young prince he is yet to be blooded in, um, in, in battle, at least anything significant. Um, the king, of course, you know, in the last ten years has, turns, has turned his raiding attention to other worlds as opposed to, um, as opposed to the northern reaches and other places on Vosgard. What? <laughs> oh, I, I thought you knew. Um, the king uses the Odin's Gate to raid other worlds. We saw no sign of this. And how did he make it past the Lenorms? Um. The Lenorms everywhere, but I assume you mean the Lenorm on Yggdrasil. Hmm. No. The one guarding the Odin's Gate. Um. For the last decade, they have used a different thing. A different path. The Odin's Gate. They no longer travel up the Yggdrasil. They simply... Time out. I thought that was the Odin's Gate. That's I... what yeah. we called it, so yep. we've got multiple... Oh, okay. Words! They can have multiple meanings. Gotcha. <laughs> hmm. Is it called the Odin's Gate? Oh, um, maybe I'm mistaken. Um, the Eye of Odin? Yes, yes, that is, that is what they called it. The Odin's Gate is on Yggdrasil. Forgive me. Um, yes, they no longer sail. They no longer sail their ships up the Elder um, up the Elder River to Yggdrasil to go through the Odin's Gate, since it became more dangerous. It is much more convenient for them to use this great, this great bronze ring called the Eye of Odin. Great bronze ring. It's a marvelous sight to be seen. They've got it set up in a very strange sort of way amongst one of the rivers. They simply sail their ships through the ring. Where is this ring? Um, it is located very close to their capital of Vozen Saga. To the south. I think he speaks of a ring of the gods. Hmm. There's more than one. Well, there has to be, doesn't there? It wouldn't do much good if there was only one. This may explain why soldiers from Vosgard haven't returned home. Yes, the traditional cycles of raiding during the spring and summer and returning in the fall and spending winters with their family has been broken. The ring can be operated at any time. If you know the... If you know the, the secrets of its activation. So then it is an eternal war for them. 
Many warriors have become rich. However, the king has sent many of his own personal warriors through the gate, and not all raids have ended well. This may have weakened the king's position. There are other kingdoms that seek his wealth and seek... Um, what worlds does he right now raid? Um, I've never been through the gate. I only have seen some of the treasures that flood the markets of, um, of Volsen Saga. But there are people that have started coming through, curious about us. About them. Hmm. Um, forgive me, but the worlds are many. Yes. And they have made enemies and friends on some. The king has sent his son, Prince Ogmanson, um, bearing gifts and probably additional um, commands as well as um, uh, messages from, from the great old king, Ogmund himself. But there are two other kingdoms that pay fealty through wars long ago. Their kings are actually here. King Godfred the Sly of Hjolmark and King Zvert Left Hand of Gosteland. I don't know any I don't know them personally except by their reputation. King Golfred the Sly he is a man more concerned about accumulation of wealth and trade. His power comes from trading with the peoples to the far ends of Vosgard. I do believe that I I, I oversaw I overheard a conversation about um, spices and dyes and incense being used as gifts for for you, Lokrik. He is a man more concerned with commerce than raiding. Still, gold, gold in, in a man's heart does not make a, a man great. King's Vert left hand. I've only heard tales. He came to power in his own family at the expense of his own family. While this does not condemn him, there is an aura of suspicion around him. Whatever happened in the halls of King's Vert, of Golsterland, there was a bloodbath, and he's the one that rose out of it. There is a third man, not a king, but a simple Vazarum. Mm, you gather that Vazarum is kind of the equivalent of Ravarum, like basically like knightly nobles almost. Okay. But from Vosgard, or sorry, from Vosland as opposed to Ravland. Okay. He is a mighty warrior. His name is Vazarum Trud Thorgrim. You will recognize him as he's a foot taller than all of his than all of the fellow Vosgardians. Um, he has gone through the Eye of Odin multiple times and come back with, with him and his fellows. Apparently his ship, his personal ship, is full of the most ruthless and powerful members of Vosgard. They are heroes in their own right. I would not pick a fight with this man. He, he actually says that to, to Galath. He, I'm sure, has a list of accomplishments that is similar to your own. I would not want the, the blood of our heroes of this world to be spent in needless combat. Still, there are some that believe that he does not have the... While he does not have the authority to announce raids, he is, he's got the strongest retinue of warriors and many ships as his legacy has um, begun to spread. There are, rumors, there are rumors that Trud designs to be king and that he, ha that he hails from two lands called Sundal Sundalsora and Hrosengras, just to the south of here. He would be if a kingship is granted to that territory, to Vergholm's neighbor. 
Gallus sort of makes this gesture like, <coughs> as you wish. I'm not particularly interested in, in fighting or not fighting somebody. You have a chance to speak to these men if you wish. Um, I'm sure that each one of them has gifts um, that they would wish to present. I can arrange <sighs> private meetings if you want. Let us see how they act in public before I speak to them. That is good. He glances over to Galath. <clears throat> As you wish. That is good. I will have the um, I will have the throne room prepared, um, and they can present their gifts. All right. So you had a nice little conversation with Droda, um, Ahmed. Um, you are actually summoned by some of the dwarves at Dvergholm as Perun of Diamond Skies has arrived with a small delegation of Esclav uh, war uh, wise men. <clears throat> Perfect. <clears throat> I'm just uh, can I the... actually speak with um, uh, Lokrik's uh, sister before? You sure. Um, we want to do that. Lokrik's sister's name is <clears throat> Braga Zelimanchar. I believe. Good name. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and we were very... Well, she was supportive sure. of me last. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Braga, you uh, actually find her... Um, um, you ask where she is, and several priests escort you to the um, to the crypt of Carrick Varn. Okay. Where, you, where she's kind of praying um, praying near the um, uh, the crypt of her mother. I wait till she's done. Okay, she... I smell the pine. A smell that I have not smelled since... She turns around. Lemio, she says. She comes over and... and Kind of surprisingly, gives you a hug. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me, let me, let me school that. Yeah, I'll hit Logri, sister. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is good to see you, my friend. She's actually, she gets down on one knee to talk to you, and her hands on your shoulder. It is good to see you. It's very, it's very good to see you. I've been thinking about you. How's, how's your hand doing? You have restored it. You restored it, it in my faith in this ages. Excellent. That's so good. That's very good to hear. Um, I uh, how have things been going here? Just for you. Uh, fine. Good. Excellent. Um, my I bro my I, brother's I, about to be coronated king. It's yeah, it's an excellent time. Yes. Um, I wanted to, to um. I wanted your opinion of of what you think <clears throat> of the Esclave and and creating the peace between the two peoples. How, has the, have they been causing any issues? I've 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 attempted before, before the winter, to communicate to them that keep your people on good on good terms, and we'll do our best to keep to bring peace to the peoples. I think too much blood has been spilt for no reason. You are very passionate about this cause, I see. Um, I've heard... I value all life, my friend. I've I've heard that the first tenuous delegations between the dwarves and the Esclave have happened at that rock of friendship that Uko placed on your behalf. Right. Um, it seems to be working, at least. Hides and furs have been traded for metal goods, and, well, no bloodshed. Excellent. Um, have, have you thought about perhaps starting a town over there? I think in time, a trading post will evolve. Will eventually evolve. True. Um, there is one thing that I need your opinion on as well. There is a delegation. She, she, she of, kind uh, of like gets you to walk outside, like standing around in a crypt is probably not a, the best place to. To have these kind. Of, yeah, no problem. They're obviously plotting to kill Lokrik. I shoot him with a crossbow. I'm sticking the crap. <laughs> she's she's walking kind of side by side with you down the hallways, and you could see that there are some oh. priests and people that that see her walking with Lemmy and talking with him. <clears throat> um, the um, the, there's a delegation coming from the Esclave to um, to pay respect and to witness uh, Lokrix's coronation. Um, one of the things that they are very interested in is the staff. That the dwarves obtained from them from battle, long yes. time ago. The Esclave staff. 
that thing, the powers that it has, the number of dwarves washed away by, by wind and storm. Dreadful. How, how do you fight an enemy that controls the elements? Um, that's that's what I'm trying to get to. It's it's uh, it's to 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 turn them from being an enemy to being an ally. With the times that we're gonna face, I think it's it's more important that we see that we see each other as that. The dwarves and the esclaves really are not that different. I'm sure, you want a dwarf, once a human, but in the essence of it, look where you're living, look what you're going through, look at your experiences. You're one and the same. She she turns and kind of stops you from walking further. She says, "I have no power over what happens to that staff. Only the king of Osgard can de- to make can make that decree." True, but but I want to understand. Um, it's not just it's not just the king's duty to be to make the right decisions. It's also, make the king's duty to make decisions that um, and and listen to the people. I want to know what you, if you can reflect on the opinion of the people. If they can start trusting the Esclave, it what do you be, think? It would be an unpopular thing for Lokrik to give the staff to the Esclave so soon after their their hostilities. I expect as such. I, I, my, my, my plan is to, to tell them that with time it will come. I'm. There, and, are, and, there are those that think that the Esclave should bend a knee to the Dwarves, given our victories. I'm not the one to make those decisions or, or to make comments regarding your politics. But I would just want to give you a chance to discuss, to converse with words instead of to converse with blood. What is it that you wish, Lemmy? What is it that you envision happening? A stronger people. This land is very special. If you have, if you have the hand, left hand fighting the right hand, it will not be able to fend off and defend its itself. Work together, and you'll be much stronger. Who knows what the future times bring? There's lots of wild creatures that live not too far from this land. Be strong. Tvorkrom is a very, very important, special place. Mm. So is Voskar. You can't be just Perhaps grow staff, stronger together. Perhaps the staff is the key to peace. I will speak to my brother when I have a chance. I appreciate that. It's I. You, I'm you I'm guessing it was family do. against him. <laughs> I'm, he he he, 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 just, he confides in he confides in her. It's like I I really don't mean to. I hope what I'm doing is right. It feels correct in my in my gut, on the inside, and I hope it is the best for you and your people. I hope in time people appreciate it and understand it. And thank you for giving me an ear. Okay, she she walks with you, and I apologize for your placement during the the ceremony. I saw the arrangement, and it really does not seem right that the heroes of Aegis would have such a low ranking amongst those in the procession. <laughs> Let me smiles. It's it, it, ma- it only matters to me where my placement in where my placement is in the eyes of the people that I love and that love me. That's all that matters. She smiles and the two of you walk out kind of like kind of friends kind of arm in arm sort of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, let me your next conversation is actually with Perun. But we'll go back to yep. the we'll go back to the twin barrel hall, where drinking is being had, and a bunch of Vosgardian warriors <clears throat> have have now have now wandered into uh, uh, wandered into the place. Uh, Uker, you have a follower amongst the dwarves. He's an arm wrestler. I can't I, I, I can't believe it. He beat me three times, and oh, there's there's a bunch of cheering as as Uker apparently has beat the best the best arm wrestler in the uh, in all of Dvergholm three times in a in a match. <laughs> it did. You're doing very well. It's very good. <laughs> um, there are some dwarves that clear as as this really large man approaches. May I sit? 
He's he's almost seven feet tall. Yeah. Uh, sit. <laughs> Low Creek has some powerful friends. Uh, mm. yeah. You must be Uka. Yeah. Uh, knowledge, Nobody? arcane, <laughs> nature, <laughs> or <the> fuck are you? <laughs> uh, planes. <laughs> It'd be from one of those things. <laughs> no. Are we in the drinking hall, or are we in another? Yeah, uh, I've moved over to the drinking the twin hall. barrel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Cool. I don't know your name. I'm Trud. Thorgrim. Mm. Just a word. Like I like this name, Trud. Uka, of the the goat people. The uh, I am a Kunin. Ah, what is this? We have big he, he goats. Just, he just grabs some random drink in the middle of the table. And... <laughs> we have big goats. They. They say that you've killed a Lenorm. Congratulations. Not an easy beast to fight. Yeah, killed three, actually. Three of them? <laughs> yeah, uh, two of them were... Uh... The scalds don't... The scalds don't do you justice. Uh, you... It's no good to bragging. Ah. But then how are the gods going to hear about your exploits? And how are common men going to be inspired? Because you take the god's monument and you move it. And then when he finds it in the wrong spot, he goes, hmm. <laughs> Eventually you drop it on god's toe. He has no choice but to acknowledge. Hmm. Yes. And there are a lot of god's toes out there. A lot of God's uh, my toes feet that... are also very big. <laughs> a lot of God's toes that need to be stepped on. Mm. Why are you confining yourself to this place? I wonder. Perhaps the bards would do better by your strength if you had a better place if you had a the means to travel to different worlds without having to go up that damn tree. Oh, uh, you know, climbing is good exercise. Mm. Yeah. And you learn things from falling. Apparently. U Uker does want access to other places, right? He's not yep. saying, yeah. Apparently, the death of these three Lenorms has mm. caused all the other Lenorms to wake up. There's a big lake not too far from here, and we decided, in a bit of our rest and relaxation, to go fighting a Lenorm. I lost a few good men. The... Uh, which lake? You're to the south. <laughs> oh, I'll get the name in it. <laughs> it, it it's quite literally... Uh, Mama, Mama <laughs> June's lake. <laughs> no, no, no. no. The, and it's not Anger Bucky's no, lake. He's it's... saying there's some lake between here and the actual Vosgard. Um, it's okay. actually a lake that's in his territory, but you don't know who he is. So, all right, I don't know. He's he's his name's Trod. Yeah, Trod. Trod. <laughs> that's a good name. Well, I mourn for the loss of my men. I know that they are in Odin's hall, drinking and feasting and fighting with him. It also means that there's a couple of extra seats on my boat that have opened up. A boat that has seen no less than a dozen worlds. I prefer to carry boats. <laughs> I heard. Moving barges with your own strength. Dragging. Dragging boats around to and fro. Yes. Uh, the Perhaps work... you could... Perhaps you are even strong enough to take up two of the three seats that I have. The Orknesco Raiders, uh, <laughs> we grab the whole boat, use Orkneska. magic to teleport away. 
Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad boats. It's kind of... Uh, uh, we could fit all seven giants on it. We have a wizard. We have a priest. We need another warrior. Someone with great strength. Unfortunately, I'm not a warrior. Hmm. I'm... I'm from the son of horse... Horse raisers and farmers. I, I am from a line uh, athlete. I, uh, I wrestle. So what do you say? You could leave all this confinement with the dwarves behind. Join us and see many worlds. We can make a warrior of you yet. <laughs> if you can He's beat me, to you. <laughs> if, if, beat me in an arm wrestling match, and I'll think about it. Huh. Or we could cast stones. That's fun too. Arm wrestling. Cast stones. How far can you cast stone? I cast stone oh. first. I win. <laughs> if I must. Okay. <laughs> Knock some drinks out of the way. <laughs> yep. <sighs> he looks at you. Best of three or best of one? Hmm. Three, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Kenny, what's up, Kenny? So, oh, who can put his <laughs> hand out? <laughs> Let me. Um... <laughs> Ten. Okay. He puts his hand out. Okay, I'll put my hand out. Okay, he's big. Like, there's just something, like, he's just kind of proportioned bigger than most men. He's just big. He's big enough to have some giant blood in him. Yep. Yep. Oh, the arm's so long. <laughs> we descended from giants from Jotun, at least on one side of my family. We I ascended. Spoils of war, I suppose. I ascended from herders, goat farmers. <laughs> Sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Okay, round one. Round one. I am going to not use any mythic or anything, and I'm not going to rage. Sure. Okay, he. You. You get a feeling that he's really strong. <laughs> okay. Um, round one. I just. So... I'm just going to. Uh, starting, he'd have a strength of 20 with levels. He would have... 22 or 23? 22. With race, he'd have 24, I believe. And then with his belt... He's, he's got a Starting 30. would be 20 plus 30? Okay. Yeah, he's got a 30 with his belt. All right. I've got a 28, so... Okay. Before so I do anything. He's a 13. Uh, 20. <sighs> You win the first one. My hand slipped. Mm, no, I. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um. The second one, I am going to rage, strength surge, and mythic point. Okay. <laughs> For this one, he's going to rage and mythic point. <laughs> oh, you have that feet, huh? <laughs> he gets a 30. 
that. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. I might. I might have to go with Captain Beardo. <laughs> um, fifty. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> the table fucking smashes as the two as you slam his hand into it. <sighs> he stands up. <sighs> <laughs> he starts laughing. Grostag, if you're looking for Thor, look no farther. He stands across the table from me. <laughs> Another round. Uka, <laughs> let it be known to all these dwarves and all these lesser men that stand in this hall. You will ever have a place on my ship for as long as I am raiding and on this world. On these worlds and this this prime material. I will keep it in mind. We are like You don't deserve him <laughs> is what he says. None of you <laughs> And he, he goes striding from the hole. He's not gonna stick around after getting his ass kicked. But... <laughs> well that's the guy. Eh? So I know I promised not to fight him, but now, isn't it? I don't know. Uka thinks he's friendly. He came over, he tried to do a thing, we did a thing, you know, it's good. Yeah, we'll do that too. Okay. That was awesome. There's a little dint in the table. No, no, the table's <laughs> cracked. The table. <laughs> yeah. There's a big crack in the fucking table. <laughs> oh, Alright, so Uka meets uh, Vizarum Trud Thorgrim, who is a, um, a budding hero in his own right. He's, um, pretty, he's pretty good. Yep. Um, he may be part of the same ship that uh, your backup character uh, uh, is on, John. He's probably the captain uh, okay. of that ship. Or, that or, makes like, sense. or like the head warrior of that ship kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. He's so beauty. If, 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 if all the Legends characters die, we could then just create a boat of fucking Voslandic raiders that go off into different worlds raiding. <laughs> Sweet. Never make backup characters, guys. Never. Always make backup characters. Right, so, make so, many. So Lokrik, Lokrik is actually receiving. There's not everyone is there, but he's actually receiving um, uh, gifts from uh, the various uh, kings that have arrived. So let's go back to Galathan. Droda. Does he get druid related gifts? Actually, I think we'll go in reverse. You know, if we hadn't been going to find enchanted sticks and ensorcelled leaves, we'd still have a Zildan. <laughs> So Lemio is summoned. Oh, actually, we'll go backwards. So Lemio is summoned to actually um, receive a Perun of Diamond Skies, as she's got a yeah. council of uh, a small council of wise men. Uh, they're all human esclave. Um, they came riding. Um, they came riding um, uh, dire like those stags, similar yeah. to Dankinder. Um, is it Dankinder supposed to be there as well? Yeah, um, Dankinder is there. They don't allow animals into the main hall. Yeah, it should be so. south, right, with the hor with the ten sender. Ten sender, ten sender, and your animal are like the only animals that are allowed in under home, um, like that are got rats. it. And they're kept okay. in this one antechamber. They converted this antechamber okay. into basically a barn. Um, so yeah, ten. No worries. I, I didn't see him there, but that's fine. I'll s no, I'll put him on. You, just in case something happens, like, and you got to go run, to fetch your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> where is this asshole? Okay, cool. Okay, you're summoned um, by dwarves to receive Perun, because apparently they know that you're you're the reason okay. why Perun is here. Yeah. Um, and there's her her miniature, um, kind of south of the on the main hall. I can horse you guys there. She's actually an attractive looking dwarven woman, wearing hides and furs. Um, where am I? Ah, oh, okay. thank you. Yes, uh, north, south of the pool. <clears throat> Master of Yggdrasil, she says. It is an honor to be received by one so revered. Uh, Lemmy does a, a bow to her and her companions. Perun of Diamond, Perun of Diamond Skies. Esclav, honored Esclav Wiseman. Welcome. Welcome to Dvarkholm. They, they all say they all say good day to you in Druidic. Okay. Blessings of Yggdrasil and nature upon all of us. I thank you for coming. Very, 
very welcome guests. <sighs> Please. You could tell dwarves are kind of like whispering and walking by. They they don't seem to be sure what to make of Perun. Yes. Please come in. Um, the in the in the larger chamber beyond there is where everyone has been gathering. Thank you so much. I'm very pleased to see you. Uh, he as as they I guess they as they start walking north, um, he he uh, chat he just like looks at her from. Uh, Okay, and they stop, side, like, she stops before this large pool. Um, and you guys are in the shield well hall. All these broken shields and old shields and banners and things in the hall. Are these mm -hmm. the tribes of the dwarves? So many. I did not expect so many. Um, yeah, the, the wise are... men are now looking around and they're talking in Esclave amongst themselves like... Maybe they're defeated tribes. Maybe they're, they're tribes of old. The dwarves, uh, came, the dwarves came from a different world. Are these the tribes that were left behind? Uh, Marty, um, I, Ahmed does not sure, but let me... Let me roll here. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, like, I don't know. History? Knowledge level okay. to Virgo. Mm, mm, mm. Ten. Makes sense. Could be. <clears throat> um. To be honest with you, uh, I I'm not sure. Mm. I think I think they are. There's, there the, the dwarves were were split. They had they had to make a run from where their original home was. I think these are, this population here is the remainder of these clans amalgamated to one the hall I did not realize they dug so deep into the mountain this this is where they feel at home I um, I want to say thank you as well uh, mm -hmm. he's actually going to give her uh, a present okay um here, I stole the staff for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, nothing Here's like the staff that I did not steal right. for you. Run along, run along quickly. <clears throat> um, I'm going to give her uh, the Ring of the Sacred Mistletoe. Ho, 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 ho. What is this? Uh, um, this, this ring, when you wear it, You'll be able to make any of your staffs once per day. You'll be able to make it magical like we druids always do. And powerful. But beyond that, anything that's magically uh, grown, any magical barriers that are plant or damaging to you, um, you, the, you would not be affected by it. So if the, if the earth wants to go to grab for you, or if tangled thorns in the ground you'll be able to walk right through it so basically where with uh, woodland stride ability can move without any harm or impedance through the magical created or okay. manipulated plants I'm gonna take that thank off thank you for your gift she says I take that off my this, list, sort, of, this uh, sort of makes up for all the druidic things that she lost when you guys uh, killed her the first time and took her stuff I will take your shirt. Lemmy's wearing some of it. <laughs> it's been actually nothing of hers. Everything's been altered. The only thing that I have of hers is the wisdom thing, but it's that's with Oberon. Okay, so she accepts your gift. <laughs> Isn't that um, my headband? No, no, I added some more stuff to yeah, it. Yeah, don't worry, <laughs> I altered it. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I rubbed off the stupid S-clav symbol and put my own in. Yeah. Put my own on there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a twig, like, hey, let me. L. <laughs> Loser, I mean, let me. Um, mm. I, I wanted to thank you because um, I hear trading is starting to happen. Um, I hear of no conflicts. I. He bows down to her. It's like, yeah, as as I as I thought, you're an excellent leader. People love and look up to you. The Esclave are um, wise, and we've learned a lesson in blood. Hmm. 
<laughs> can, I, can I share share something with you? Um, I've I've travelled a lot. It's true. I mean, I've I've seen many worlds, but I've seen many different things, and it tells me some something that this land is special. Vosgard and this world, this land where you are, is very special, and many things want it. Not good things. Many bad things. This land around Dvergholm is cursed, and you don't know what you're doing. By not oh. appeasing the mother of monsters in the lake, you are forcing her to wake up. We'll get to that later. That's he's like, you have to roll he's like, sense motive? he's like, there's a, <laughs> there's something coming for that, for her. We need another mythic t f f <laughs> another mythic trial. There are, um, there are spirits that speak to us and say that the Lenorms are waking. All of them. Many of the, we've we've already defeated many Lenorms, and we will be dealing with the other ones. With our hopefully, with our foolishness in following the Esclave Raven, we've we've expended the strength of our people in fighting you. And now we are forced to grovel at the foot of dwarves for protection. Trade. What? If that is what you want, then we will provide hides and furs so that the dwarves here can remain warm in, in their castle, in their mountain. But no... That even before the Vols gods, the Esclave foresaw the Ragnarok. And the signs are all around us, Lemmy. Have you heard of the White Wizard? She, she you've got her attention. The reason that I am here, and that all the other ones that you saw, all the ones that stood in, and defeated the previous bar barricade, we are the ones that were here to deal with these problems. We've been brought by the wizard to deal with all of the problems of this world and all the others. There is a heavy load on our shoulders. We're bearing it. But we need everyone to understand what their place is. And your place is not as grovelers. You you and the you and the dwarves. We're on the same. You were Esclav, but looking you now, you're a dwarf. What's the real difference? Where you came from? The type of blood that runs through you? Where you live? Your biggest thing is what you're facing. And all the enemies that are living and trying to take these lands and trying to take the power in these lands for themselves they're gonna come for you <laughs> you're not groveling you're shaking hands with the other part you're getting stronger Locric's not gonna treat you like a slave Locric's not sorry King Locric's not gonna treat you like that I've bled with him he almost died trying to save me I will die trying to save him same with all the others these are good, these are good, loyal people. Please understand it. You're, shaking, you're trying to become stronger for what is coming. And we are doing our part to make sure that you're prepared. And we'll be here for you. But we have to be on the same side. I will hold you to that promise, Lemmy. Personally. Let me, let me, let me open his eyes. You should. It's my responsibility to make sure that you're all ready. She nods. I am here, aren't I? He puts, um... That's enough. No, that's enough. Um, yes. Again, thank you. And, um... I am... I am getting you your staff. It will take time. Politically, Locker cannot. If you understand, 
from the Dwarven perspective for him to make such a quick decision and a quick gift would not be possible. First up for him is to become king. She she looks like she's not surprised. <coughs> it still remains a point of contention. Yeah. But but now she's aware of that yeah, I haven't given it to you right now, bitch, because there's lots of things. But uh, I would like to make another diplomacy check if I need to. Sure, yeah, you, you, to... you can. Uh, are you trying to make her more friendly to you, or are you trying to yes. ask her for a favor? More friendly. Okay. So 1d20 plus 18. Bonuses, please. Uh, good role-playing, plus 2. A gift? You can add your tier, plus 2, and you, a bribe, plus 2. So, bribe. Well, uh, I'd like to add a d6 as well, please. Sure. Bribe. <laughs> Just call a call a spade a spade, right? Forty-one. Bribe. Okay, so she's now not no longer indifferent. She's now friendly towards. Uh... Okay, so forty-one. That's at the coronation. Got it. Keeping track of it right here. Uh, what's the, what's, wait. Yeah. Diplomacy. Yeah, friendly, not helpful. Okay. Very well. Let me. So she's friendly. Yep. So let me. Let me is. Um, is very sincere in everything he said. Like, he believes it, that this is, you know, this This is required for them to survive, not for them as Esclave, for them as the people of this world. Yeah, she, um, she believes you. She's not an easy nut to crack, though. Um, there is, yeah. there's uh, decades or generations of hostility between the dwarves and the Esclav, but Lemmy, Lemmy is acting the part of the negotiator, of the peacemaker. Does this increase my life thing with my source? <laughs> well, too well, friendly. Yep. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm just kidding. So right. this is too friendly. So awesome. one, by, one by one, there are um, there are delegates that are coming to provide gifts to um, um, to Lokrik. Um, they are providing gifts in kind of like reverse order of importance. Um, yeah. There are common folk that come and give little tiny offerings. Apparently they're using Uker's stone bowl for this. Um, apparently this is the last place the stone bowl ended up and it kind of got dropped in the, in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the throne room and, and was never moved. <clears throat> so there are common folk that are giving like flowers and, and like a cup, uh, like some silver coins and little offerings and sort of like, um, uh, uh, more ceremonial offerings. Um, there are soldiers that go and, and, and give him a salute, uh, kind of giving him the gift of their, of their service. Uh, there are priests that come and give blessings uh, then it's called upon by the um, by the heroes of Aegis to give gifts. Are we supposed to be showing up in the hall? Yeah, well, we, we um, could, uh... Marty, I moved the S clef to their place, and we're supposed to give uh, gifts to uh, Lokrik. <laughs> Want this back? <laughs> I like that there's a, there's a ballista closet. I forgot about that. <laughs> I want this shit back. <laughs> Don't screw me over. We don't have brooms here. We have ballista closets. Ah. Yeah, the, okay. not everyone is gathered at the same time, but it just seems like throughout the day, people are coming and giving gifts to Lokrik. Um, but yeah, Droda does come and say, it is uh, Heroes of Aegis, and he tracks each one of you down individually. Lokrik is receiving gifts as well as um, um, oaths of fealty from um, from those of Dvergholm and, and beyond. It would be a good time to um, to visit him, to wish him well yeah. before his co official coronation. Oh, by the way, my name is Droda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> so I don't know if, if the heroes of Aegis kind of have anything that they want to give to. Uh... Um, yeah. 
I'm going to go to Lokrik. Okay, Uker. Uh, wh- this is the same day as the the bar thing. Yeah, you you guys are you guys are almost. Uker's visibly kind of drunk. <laughs> Uker's 